Yo, what's going on, guys? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. The Party on Broad podcast can be found on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, hit that subscribe button, guys. If you're watching us here at the Painted Lines YouTube channel today, we are discussing Tyson's number seven NHL draft prospect, Lucas Raymond, one of the top wing prospects in the entire NHL draft. We're going to review his season. We're going to discuss his strengths, his weaknesses, and how he projects in the NHL moving forward. Joining me today is my man Tyson. Follow him on Twitter at Koibel Tyson. What's going on, Tyson? Not much. Excited to talk about some hockey as we're just around the corner from the startup again. So it's time. Love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. All right, let's do an overview. Uh, Tyson, talk to us a little bit who Lucas Raymond is as a hockey player. Yeah, so Lucas Raymond is a very interesting, intriguing, and elite prospect. Um, in the shares draft. So at the beginning of the year, he was actually ranked on most people's lists as number two or number three going in. And then he found himself in kind of a, I wouldn't say difficult, but a harder situation than you would hope sometimes for a player in the draft year. So he plays in Sweden and the way this the Sweden kind of developmental system works is that he was too good for their junior league. They bumped him up to play senior men's league as a 17 year old. So he's playing against you know, guys in their 20s and 30s. And the Swedish Hockey League is one of the better professional leagues uh, in Europe. And so pretty much outside of the KHL in Russia, they're considered the, the second best um, in, in Europe. And so he found himself on a decent team with some depth, and they did not just hand him a top six role. So he uh, found himself in like a third line, fourth line role for the entire season. So what happened was going into last draft year, uh, at the at the under 18s last last summer, he was amazing. Like you're watching him and you're like, oh my gosh, he's one of the best one on one players that I had seen by someone his age that year. Just wowing you on so many shifts, and you're like, okay, this guy's might maybe even challenging for a number one position um, with Lafreniere at the time. Even though you know Lafreniere was kind of considered a slam dunk, there was some people being like, man, he's just so skilled, he's so slick. And then he goes into this year and he finds himself struggling to move his way up this lineup. And so he had a very small offensive season, uh, didn't blow anyone's socks off. Um, and then he was playing limited minutes. And so what that does, is, if you're a scout and someone like me who's watching, trying to watch him frequently, <laughs> is you see flashes of that moment of those points of the under 18s and he's playing against his peers where you're like, oh my gosh, he has a skill set that's incredible. But then you see it in such small pieces and quantities. And then he's trying to transition to a, a men's game. And so that's why he's seven on my list. But I would not be shocked if in five years we look back and he's the second or third best player in this draft. Um, it's just you only have so much to go on. So that's him in a nutshell um, in his season, to be honest. Awesome stuff. Let's move on to strengths. Like from the little, from I, from what I gathered, this guy is a solid two-way player. He's got excellent vision. Uh, tell us a little bit about Lucas Raymond's strengths at the next level. Yeah, so he he does everything really well defensively, offensively. Swedish players, for the most part, um, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part in their developmental systems, they crank out players that are really good offensively and defensively. And so you can have these really elite players like Nicholas Backstrom in Washington is a, a prime example of, of a Swedish player that kind of has that good combination. He's not a defensive liability, and yet he's amazing offensively. He's made Ovi exponentially better in so many ways, um, quietly so. And so that's a pretty typical Swedish developmental system um, that cranks these guys out. And so Raymond has all that aspect. But then on top of being like, you know, a strong two-way player, he is arguably the best one-on-one -on -one uh, player in the draft. In other words, if he's coming down on a defend on a defender, like whether he's using his speed, whether he's using his hands, um, whatever it is, or his shot, and he has an amazing shot too. Like he's going to get around the guy uh, a, a lot of the time, um, even if he's bigger or older or stronger or potentially even faster. So 
he's a very, very highly, highly intelligent player. And so those are a hundred percent his, his strengths. Like he just has this perfect, uh, I say perfect, almost perfect kind of combination of all those things. So, so he is someone that I could see a team even jump into three or four um, right. and take for, for those reasons. Because if you saw that, uh, those aspects, there's very few players in this draft you look at and you're like, oh, he's not a defensive liability. He can beat almost anyone one-on-one, at least in his age group. And he's got a really good shot. You know, there's, there's just so much to like. All right, let's move on to weaknesses. What are some areas that Lucas Raymond needs to improve on? Uh, I would say counting stats, which might be kind of weird, but he's this player that he has these dynamic qualities to him offensively, and he's good defensively. Um, but you can get a little bit concerned when it doesn't seem like the points are keeping up with that skill set. And so uh, at, at worst, that means he's going to be a second, third line player. But the issue is if you're taking somebody in the top 10 in a draft like this that is deep and has a lot of deep names on the top 10, like you want to make sure that that guy that you're picking and selecting is at least as far as your evaluation is concerned is elite. And so um, for Raymond, that's just something that I would want to see. I don't think he'll be in the NHL next year. Um, okay. He'll likely be back in Sweden. We're seeing a lot of this now where some of the bubble guys are just re-signing contracts because the the seasons in Sweden, they're already going back to training camps. They start wow. pretty early over there in, in Russia and Sweden and in Finland, and they're already going back for camp. So um, it's kind of a one of those situations where he's probably just going <laughs> to go back before even he's drafted. So. Uh, it might be one of those things where we're re- redoing this and I'm reserving the right to redo my list because some of these guys might be playing again um, pretty quick here. And uh, if that's the case, um, if he if he puts up points quickly, I think that he silences those critics. But um, there's just always a little bit of a fear. Like I think of a guy like, you know, he wasn't as good defensively, but Sonny Milano um, is a name that comes to mind where Columbus took him, I think like top 20. And he just had, he had this YouTube video where he just was doing these crazy things with his hands and the puck in the air. And he just got traded to Anaheim for like a bag of pucks in the off season. And he's basically not doing anything. And I put up some points this year, but like he's a defensive liability and he's just uh, kind of this guy that you look at in moments and you're like, Oh my gosh, no one else can do that with the puck. How did he do that? And then for like nine games, you're like, why is he in the NHL? So it's kind of like uh, you just hope that that's not, what Raymond is. I don't think he is, but uh, you just want to see those points increase. And again, some of it was situational. He put up four points in seven games at the world juniors as an underager at the under twenties, which was good. But uh, I would have liked to even see him do more. So I watched all his games at the world juniors multiple times over and was kind of like, okay, I like your game, but I want to see more, some more points here. So. All right, let's move on to best fits. Which NHL teams do you think would be the best fit uh, for Lucas Raymond? Yeah, I think two teams that would do well to take him and are likely going to be picking around that range where he's available, New Jersey or Buffalo. Um, New Jersey has a 1-2 center punch right now, Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, um, some pretty decent young guys. Um, Heischer is like 22, turning 22, and Hughes is 19. So uh, they got these young one-two punches, but their wing scoring is lacking. So you put a guy like Raymond who can help defensively. Um, Raymond and Heischer together. Heischer's a good defensive player as well. would be incredible. Um, Buffalo uh, is just sorely lacking in everything that's not Jack Eichel <laughs> and Rasmus and Rasmus Dahlin. And so um, they just signed last year Jeff Skinner to this $9 million contract. Um, which in the NHL is high because he had 40 goals in one season. And a lot of us were looking at that and going, oh, no, this is not going to go well. I think he has thir- he had 13 this year. Um, so they just don't have anything other than Eichel. So a guy like Raymond with that upside could slot nicely in with Eichel in maybe even a year and uh, begin to help him. So I think he'd be an excellent fit on those two teams who have center depth but are just missing those elite kind of two-way wingers. Awesome. So that is Tyson Quibell. Follow him on Twitter at Quibell Tyson. Uh, lock it down to the paintedlines.com for everything uh, Flyers and hockey NHL draft. Uh, for Tyson, for myself, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome.
Russell Westbrook. You will 